Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I want to thank you for coming to this channel where we're going to talk about a CNC router bit that I wish I knew existed when I first was looking for router bits for my CNC router. One of the bits that you need to get is a surfacing bit. So I went out and I purchased a $30 brand name bit, this one right here, which functioned well and I was quite okay with it. But I didn't realize that I could get uh, not just as good of a bit, but a better bit for half the price. Here's the way this went down. About a month ago, I was approached by a company. And they said, will you please assess this tool? And if it matches or meets up to your expectations, can you make a video about it? And I said, well, absolutely, because I want to get tools recommended to you as you're getting into CNC routing that are good quality tools and will give you all the flexibility that you need. And when I finally got down to testing this thing, I was blown away. I mean, at first I was a little skeptical because this is a China manufactured tool. I was wrong. This tool turned out to be like three times more flexible than this one for half the price, less than half the price. So I'm gonna walk you through this whole testing process that I went through and show you that this tool is much better to have in your tool arsenal than this tool. So the first thing we have to do is measure it out, make sure it meets up the specs. Let me walk backwards in time and show you all the stuff that I did. Okay, I just got this router bit in the mail the other day and the first thing I wanna do is check the dimensions on it, make sure. This is supposed to be a quarter inch shank, a quarter inch cut width, and one inch cut diameter. So I was getting my set of calipers. Oh, by the way, if you don't have a set of calipers, you absolutely must have a set in your CNC router arsenal because you want to measure tools and you want to make sure you're picking up the right tool and get a good measure on it. And make sure everything's measured out dead nuts. You know, sometimes you need to cut wood at very tight tolerances. So I am highly recommend this set here. It's an off-brand name, but it's a high quality off-brand. It's called Ace Meter. And what I like about it is the really big screen. You can look at it from a mile away and you know what it's saying. So it looks like I'm off just a little bit there. So I have to reset my zero. And that's really easy to set, just zero. And uh, this feels very solid in the hands. So there's a link to get this off of Amazon in my description down below. Get a set of calipers if you don't have one. Um, okay, so it's supposed to be a quarter inch shank, 0.2495. That is so stinking close. I, that I'm, I'm impressed. And it's got the three flutes. This is supposed to be a quarter inch each. And I've got a point, oops, let's get this held right, 0 0.250, yes. Get that held right, right at the edge. And a 0.2495, okay. And the final one, 0.2495, I am very happy with this. So this tool so far measured out like dead nuts, perfect. It's time to take it out to the router and see if it cuts at one inch and then take it through some other paces. So in the meantime, I'm gonna throw some like nice background music, cool stuff that I found. So uh, give you some of that Muzak going on while you're riding on the elevator kind of thing. By the way, if you are brand new to CNC routers, you want to subscribe to this channel because I talk about all things CNC. I give you the recommendations for the stuff that you need. I really try to find reasonably priced stuff that's high quality. So I've got a lot of things in the pipeline right now. So make sure you subscribe. All right, so let's jump out to the router and have some nice music in the background and put this thing through its paces. I had a piece of oak that I made. It was a Christmas block that I needed to resurface, a bad job. And so I put some side cuts on it so I could clamp the part down and then set up the tool by touching the sides and offsetting it by half an inch. The first thing I wanted to do was check the width. Does this cut to its width? So I set the tool at the depth of the tool, 0.25 inches, and started running it through at 35 inches per minute, which I immediately could tell was running too slow, but decided to run it through anyway. And while we're waiting, I just want to say thank you to Jeff, Patrick, Leroy, Chevy, Zach, Robert, William, and the rest of you who I've been dialoguing with. I really enjoy talking to you guys. 
and just people who watch this channel and talk to me. Anyway, when that tool was done and I measured it, one inch dead nuts. This is like machining tolerances. I was so surprised. Now you see the burn mark right there. That's a dead giveaway that the tool is running too slow. You don't ever want to keep doing that. That'll wear down your tool really fast. Heat ruins tools. The corners are really good. The side edges are really good. And I totally expected breakout because I was running the edge of the tool, but these edges look perfect. So that surprised me. So the next thing to do was to surface the part, right? And so I started to run my surfacing program, but I realized I forgot to change the feed rate from 35 inches per minute to 40 in, 45 inches per minute. So I rewrote the program, started to run it again, and I could tell the tool still not cutting the way you want it to cut. When you get good at this, you can just tell by the sound of the tool of the bit, whether it's cutting right. So now we're running at 60 inches per minute, and this is starting to sound good. Now I can tell that the tool actually could handle more, but that it was feeling good, I decided to let it run out. So we'll speed this up a little bit. And it's just, the, the cut was so clean, so smooth, so easy. And I wasn't having a single problem with this until, <laughs> until I started to run across the knot. Now, I was standing to the left, and this thing was throwing pieces at my face, thank goodness I had my glasses on, but this router bit, the surfacing bit, didn't even know it was going through a harder material. It just kept right on going. So I was liking this, this bit. When it was done, checking out the surface, everything was looking good. I had my tool set at a 90% step over, which probably was a little too much. Probably should have gone to 70 to 80 step over. I'll explain that in another video. You want to watch my channel. Now you can see there's a little bit of a burn mark right there at the change in direction in the grain. That's another indicator that the tool is still running too slow, the feed rate. So feed rates are really, really important on tools. I'm gonna to shoot another video about that, but overall the surface was good, no breakouts on the edges. I expected to see that, but I didn't get it. And I was really impressed. Just check out the tool a little bit. Everything looked really good. There was no burn on the tool. It was time to take it to its next pace. I was gonna cut a T-slot. So I took a quarter inch end mill, ran it through at three eighths of an inch deep, two slots and took the surfacing bit and turned it into a T-slot cutter. Now, this started to bog down immediately as it started to cut, and I was wondering what was going on. It, it seemed to be cutting really good, but the router itself was bogging down. And when it exited the slot, I could see exactly what was going on. I didn't take into account a feature on this tool, this radius right here, which I was so glad to see. When you have a radius on a tool, when it transitions, that keeps it from vibrating, getting something called chatter, and it makes the tool last a lot longer. So this run right on through Bob's E4 CNC router, I gotta hand it to it, it just pulled that router right through. The only part of this process that had problems was the router itself. Now you can see the little roundedness in the corners where the radius on the tool is rubbing, but it's still cut perfectly well. We got a measure off of it, and it measured just under a quarter inch on one side and just over a quarter inch on the other. I mean, this is three thousandths of an inch apart. This is like machining tolerances, okay? This is what you cut metal to metal parts. Corners look really good. I ran one more slot because I needed to get a width on it because the way I had to clamp down, it, uh, I couldn't get the calipers in the other cut. So this was measuring at 2.51 or 0.251. The width of the slot was 0.991, nine thousandths under. Still really, really, really good for woodwork. One more was a joinery type of slot. So I ran along the side. And I expected to see some things on this that I didn't see. You can see the corners look really good, nice and square. What I totally expect to see was tear out right here because only a percentage of the tool is running along the edge of the wood. This is a piece of oak. And this measured a little bit over, two thousandths over, one thousandths over. This ran so good, I went ahead and wrote a program to surface my Bob's E4 CNC router. 
This tool absolutely passed my test plus 10. Not only did it cut dead nuts like machining tolerances that you would find in car parts going together like in your engine, is much more flexible than your standard surfacing tool. The price is right. And I went back to the company. I said, this tool passes plus 10. I want a discount code to pass on to you. So they gave me a discount code. So down in the description is that code and the link to get this off of Amazon with a 5% discount. The tool's half the price, three times as flexible, actually four times as flexible. I did a couple other things to it that uh, worked it. I did a big cop pocket cut really deep and perfect. Um, the calipers, get calipers. The link for those calipers that I absolutely recommend is down below as well. And uh, if you have a Bob Seen, uh, Bob's E4 CNC router. The program I wrote for that tool is available to you on Etsy for $1.20. You'll get instructions that has that discount code and the link to get it from there too. So the link for that is down below as well. All kinds of links down below. Subscribe to this channel if you're brand new to CNC routers because I teach you everything you need to know plus. I, my intention, my goal is to help you become an expert and to know a lot more than what standard CNC router people know. 15 years of CNC machining experience, I'm passing it all on to you. And I will teach you all the design stuff. I have tutorials for VCarve, and I'm gonna be getting into tutorials for some of the other software like ESOL and Carbide Create. So with all that being said, if this is helpful, give me a thumbs up, and I would love to hear your comments, other ideas that you can use for this tool. This is Garrett, and I hope you have a great day.